Morning, and many thanks for joining us for this morning's briefing on the quarter two 2021 results for the national accounts and international accounts. Um, you see your microphones are, are set to mute and we'll keep them on mute as we go through the presentations on today's results. We'll have some time for questions at the end of the presentation. So can I ask people to use the Q&A function, the question and answer function um, to submit any questions they may have. Um, we've been seeing the impact of the COVID-19 related restrictions over the quarters 2020 and in Q1 2021 most recently. The relaxation of the, the restrictions in, in quarter two has had an impact on the results um, uh, and the, the, kind of the staggered nature of that uh, relaxation as well will be um, drawn out by the colleagues here this morning. Uh, so to say, as always, the slides from the briefing are available along with the releases, uh, the statistical releases on the CSO website and a recording of today's presentations will be available on CSO's YouTube channel. Um, and again, as always, users can contact us at any stage. Queries on the statistics, contact details are available on the releases, the statistical releases and on uh, the press releases. Um, I'll pass now to Chris, who'll take us through the quarter two results for the national accounts, and then on to uh, John, who'll take us through the international accounts results for quarter two. Many thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I have the quarterly national accounts for Q2 2021 for you. Um, there's three things to look out for this morning going uh, through the sets of accounts. Uh, one, is the, the strong growth that we're seeing overall is, is as always, in large part to do with the, the strong growth in MNEs uh, for several years. So the several years of strong uh, MNE growth in the data, we're going to try and discuss that a little bit. We also see the bounce uh, in terms of COVID, the, the lessening of restrictions in Q2, and the Q1 on Q2 uh, a growth there is really just a recovery um, from the restrictions uh, in Q1 2020. And then thirdly, uh, when you're doing comparisons year on year, um, this is the first time we've done a year on year comparison of, of the COVID period in the base. So the low, uh, the, the largest uh, quarter impacted by COVID was Q2 uh, 2020. So the year on year uh, comparisons need a little bit of uh, caution there. So to look at our, our, our headlines, um, for the quarter GDP is up by 6.3%, uh, driven by the, the large uh, MNE growth and growth in, in domestic sectors. Uh, so the ME dominated sectors, industry up 3.6, um, information and communication up 6.2, and then some of the more domestically focused sectors, construction bouncing back from Q1 up 22.9%. On the expenditure uh, measure of GDP, uh, net exports are up 8.2% or 4.2 uh, billion, uh, growth of 5.8% in investment, increased government uh, expenditure. But the real feature, I guess, of Q2 is, is the uh, resumption of, of consumption or the, the rebound to consumption up 12.6%. Uh, and that's probably the largest factor that's driving our uh, deglobalized or modified measure, modified uh, domestic demand on the bottom left there. So MDD is up 8.4%, largely because of the um, recovery in uh, personal consumption. If we uh, just look at GDP and GNP, uh, both up, so this is the, uh, the picture, I guess, of the quarter that everything's positive. Uh, well, we've looked at a mixed picture over the last uh, number of quarters. Some things were up, some were down. Uh, this quarter, everything uh, across the board, bar a couple of sectors are, are, are positive. And um, so we've growth in GDP, and we've also growth in GNP, largely to do with that domestic uh, recovery from uh, Q1. Compared to some of our European peers, this is some available uh, European peers that, that, that we can show you at this stage in the quarter. Um, the 6.3% in Ireland, that, that rebound, I guess, from Q1 um, is, as always, I guess, an outlier in, in the graph. But we also have strong, uh, very strong uh, uh, recoveries in Q2 for the UK, Latvia, Estonia, Austria. Um, and reaching right down to, to smaller rebounds. A lot of this is related to restrictions when they were applied and when they were lifted. And um, certainly in Ireland's case, a lot of that is, is to do with the, the lifting of restrictions as well. If we look across the sectors, so the output uh, method and look across the different uh, sectors, of the economy, uh, the big sector industry um, dominated by manufacturing uh, is up 3.6%. Uh, the other uh, big M&E sector, information and communication, is up 6.2%. Uh, professional and maintenance support services up 4.1%. And then getting to the more uh, domestically focused sectors, public admin, education and health up 28 
uh, distribution, transport, hotels and restaurants of 0.7. And that, that small uh, or smaller than expected uh, growth in, in distribution, transport, hotels and restaurants is about the timing of the restrictions uh, during the quarter. Uh, some of the sectors were largely affected in, in May and some uh, like accommodation in, in June, uh, late in the quarter. Uh, construction there is probably the biggest number I might catch your eye, and that's that's the the twenty two point nine percent the rebound uh, from 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 the low in Q one uh, twenty twenty. If we uh, look at these figures for the sectors across time, and I, I point this out, I guess regularly, but you can go into the publication and you can toggle off. Uh, sectors to see what you're, you're interested in. So if we pick the, some of the key uh, sectors to simplify the graphic for us, um, we can see that the, the tail of two economies that we, we've always looked at, I guess, um, the bottom three lines on, on the graph showing the domestically focused sectors, uh, construction, distribution, transport, hotels and restaurants, uh, as well as uh, arts and entertainment and other services. So these three um, swing uh, up and down uh, with the restrictions and are related to, to the pandemic. The big effect in Q2 2020 uh, and the effect again, particularly in construction in Q1 uh, 21. Um, so we want to contrast these then uh, with the M&E sectors. So industry and information and communication. And if we look at these, this is quite substantial growth over a sustained period of time. Uh, not, not just uh, the COVID period where these M&E sectors have done well and maybe counterbalanced what was going on in the domestic economy with some of the falls, um, but this is a sustained uh, period over several years. So we just pulled up from the index here on, on Q1, uh, 2019, there's 58% growth in the industry number um, over Q1 2019 and 43% uh, in information and communications. So we, we've looked at these for a number of quarters, and I mentioned this the last briefing, but we might talk a little bit uh, more about it. So we talked to our colleagues in data collection and our large cases unit and asked, um, what kind of discussions are we having with, with these uh, large companies? And what are they telling us about the drivers, explaining to us what the drivers of growth are? So we picked two uh, examples, pharma and tech and information communication. And we asked, well, what are the drivers of growth uh, behind this data, this sustained uh, growth over several years. Uh, so in pharma, we got um, active uh, API, active pharmaceutical ingredients, uh, manufacturing biologics and bulk dose manufacturing. They were really the three Kind of top explanations across a lot of companies uh, and we also got uh you know r d and, and and coordination of global business operations as well uh for the pharma sector while for information communications what are the drivers of, of this data and we were told that it's uh, software licensing uh, sale of web enabled services uh product r d uh, software development software distribution and, and product localization so we thought that'd be useful just to share that with you today, the, the explanations we get from the biggest cases when we meet them to, to understand the data and what's going on uh, behind it, uh, particularly because of that sustained growth now we've seen over several years in the data. So it's, it's I guess, one of the takeaways when you're doing some of the comparisons today, um, looking at the M&E data. To look at some of our more uh, high frequency series in CSO, um, Industrial production turnover is showing uh, this fall in, in, in manufacturing. Now, this um, is the first step, I guess, in our process for national accounts. We're looking at value added um, rather than production, and we bring in costs into that, and then we apply deflators, which are strongly negative uh, in manufacturing. We come up with our results for the quarter of, of 3.8%. So that's uh, worth looking at for those of you who are looking at the implied uh, deflators in the data. For the services sector, that's a little bit easier to understand. Um, we look across the elements in our monthly services uh, index. So the month on month changes uh, you see here are, are very strongly related to the lifting of restrictions. Um, and that explains maybe one of the uh, effects on distribution, transport, hotels and communications that we might have seen a stronger result there. But accommodation, for example, um, at the big uh, increase in June with lifting of restrictions in, in early June. So it's only the last month of, of, of the quarter where uh, that sector is affected. But I guess we could look at broadly based uh, growth in Q2 over Q1 um, across a number of, of, of services sectors. If we sum up uh, the data into what we call the, the M&E or foreign dominators, this is 85% plus of the data in a particular sectors, M&E dominated, and then we put all the rest into other. And um, I think the main takeaway from this analysis in the quarter is that they're both positive. 
So in previous quarters where we might have had uh, the MEs growing and the domestic sector falling or, or the other way around as we had in, in Q420, um, this quarter is different. They're both positive. So everything's kind of going uh, in the one direction across a whole range of sectors for us. And then on the expenditure side of the accounts, um, so we look at uh, consumption, government spending, uh, stocks and net exports to get to uh, GDP on the expenditure method. Um, again, on the, on the website, you can toggle off uh, some of the series here. So if we take the international elements off the net exports um, and the investment, uh, we can see we can uh, derive a modified uh, domestic demand, the blue line, uh, the light blue line uh, in the middle of the chart. And we can build that up as well. We can look at its personal consumption, uh, government expenditure, and then modified investment or modified uh, cap form is a bit that you have to add to that stacked bar to get up to the blue line. And uh, modified domestic demand to the quarter is up 8.4% uh, Q2 over Q1. And as you can see from the, the large increase in consumption, that's the main driver of our deglobalized or modified uh, measure in Q2. Within uh, expenditure, uh, the consumption element uh, up 12.6%. Um, and this is largely related to services, uh, increases in, in, in services in the quarter. Compared to a couple of our European peers, again, some that are available at this stage, um, Ireland's growth at 12.6% uh, is on the far right. And we've also got strong growth uh, in Spain, Netherlands uh, and Austria in, in household uh, consumption in, in, in the quarter. Similarly, as we did with the output side, looking at some of our more high frequency data in CSO with uh, retail sales, uh, we can look across the categories here. And again, we see that it's the timing uh, of lifting of restrictions and how the month on month changes uh, have been affected. So department stores and, and, and clothing, uh, large increases month on month in, in May for those, uh, while books uh, and furniture went a little bit later uh, in, in June, we're seeing some, some prices uh, there. As we've uh, come to expect, the uh, sales, the online sales or online shares of turnover by Irish uh, retailers uh, has fallen again. So once the, we, we saw this over the last uh, couple of quarters, as restrictions increase, the share of online sales increases and it goes back down again after the uh, restrictions are lifted and, and Q2 uh, is no different. We can see that across the, the, the months of, of Q2 for a range of uh, uh, product types. So that's the summary, I guess, of retail sales. It charts the, the pandemic uh, quite well. And the July data was out uh, this week um, to give you the, the latest monthly data on, on retail sales. After consumption, uh, we look at investment or capital formation. So the, the quarter uh, on quarter uh, rise there uh, is, is driven by the building or, or the uh, construction sector. Building constructions up 23.2%. Uh, machinery equipment's down at uh, 3%, and uh, we give you the, the customary breakdown without aircraft, it's down even further. Um, but I think the main point on, on looking at um, machinery equipment is we had a very strong Q1. Um, the, the result for Q1 across the previous year and quarter was, was very strong. So Q2 is still strong compared to last year, um, but quarter and quarter it's, it's down a little um, with uh, large uh, results for aircraft, as uh, positive results for aircraft in the quarter as well. And across time, I guess we're lucky now to see a, a series. And it's worth taking a little uh, bit of time just to look that we don't have really large IP um, as we had in Q2, Q4, 19, and Q1, 20. So both the current quarter and the base quarter uh, for year-on-year -year analysis uh, is affected by some of the large globalization factors. So hopefully uh, this is a trend to come in our data that we'll, we'll see this across a number of quarters. We can do more analysis and show more data and we don't have large uh, globalization effects. But the investment or cap form data um, is quite stable over the quarters and allows us to do a little bit more analysis and show you uh, some more figures. The last element on the expenditure side, uh, exports, net exports, uh, as uh, typical, I guess, we see is another strong result uh, for net exports, um, up 8.2% uh, uh, or, or 4.2 billion Q2 over Q1 in constant prices. But I leave that, uh, John has a lot more details on that. If you, I leave that with him. Um, if we take the 6.3% growth rate and uh, we decompose that into the domestic element modified domestic demand and the modified net exports, uh, we can see here that we're getting a contribution, a positive contribution from both. 
So the strong growth we're seeing in the quarter is the, the long-term, I guess, growth in the M&E data and the rebound in the domestic data. And that's what's giving us the strong result um, uh, for GDP overall at 6.3%. Uh, if we look then at the transition from uh, GDP to GNP, so typically taking out the uh, M&E profits, um, we get our, our GNP growth rate of 6.7%. But the key factor here, to, the takeaway is in constant prices is the large uh, net factor income or net factor flows, again, up around 30 billion. So in constant prices, we're used to a uh, profit outflow of about 20 billion over a number of quarters. And now three uh, out of the last four uh, have this higher level of profit outflow. So again, I'll, I'll leave that uh, with John to show you, but that's that's really what's determining one of our, um, our GNP uh, data series uh, for a number of the last uh, quarters. And just to step aside a little uh, bit and just look at some other uh, forms of analysis. So all the data has been our latest data, quarter on quarter, seasonally adjusted. But if we just step back a little bit and look at some uh, year on year series, because these are questions we get asked quite regularly. Some large numbers here because um, the three things I highlighted at the start. The year on year Q2 over Q2 20 is from the COVID low and that's showing you a GDP of 21.6%. So the increase uh, of the cumulative four quarters uh, over the COVID low uh, last year is, is giving us quite a high result. And that's worth keeping in mind that, that was the low point um, for, for COVID. If we look at the full half year uh, that we have at the moment, the first six months of 21 over 20, uh, you're getting a similar kind of result of uh, 16.3% for GDP. Is typical of the case, I guess, now in CSO publications, we're doing these biennial comparisons to try and get a COVID-free year, a COVID-free month uh, in, our, in our publications to try and illustrate uh, where we are now uh, with a pre-COVID period. If we look at the first half of 19, so that's two years of, of growth, um, that's showing a 20.8% increase. So that's uh, the first six months of 21 over the first six months of 19, there's a 20.8% increase in GDP. And that comes back to, uh, so there's no COVID factors there. That's coming back to the uh, strong M&E growth that we've had over several years in our data and uh, that, that I highlighted and talked about a little bit uh, earlier. Some of you might wonder about the modified measures, how the modified measures looking um, over time. And we had a quick look at that, that modified domestic demand for the first half of the year over the first half of 20 is up 4.3%. And that's the, the recovery from COVID. But similarly, if we look at modified domestic demand for 21 over 19, it's down 3.5%. So that's kind of the, the result, I guess, most of you uh, would have expected, that the domestic economy has, has recovered, but not quite up to the levels uh, of pre-COVID. Just quickly to look at some of the elements uh, of expenditure year on year, um, the recovery, um, where has it come from? Well, well consumption's back nearly 20% uh, across goods and services. Um, so year on year, um, we're seeing the increase in spending on cars, uh, as well as communications and, and, pu and public transport. That's so driving up the PCE uh, data uh, year on year. And investment, we see the construction uh, data. Uh, adding a lot there. So new dwellings and building and construction uh, up, uh, as well as spending on machinery and equipment. So they're, they're the year on uh, year comparisons. Um, and then the final thing I want to show you just before I sum up is we've some new data in the publication. So we've been developing the wages data over a number of uh, quarters to show you what's going on with uh, compensation of employees or, or wages and salaries. And um, we have a new chapter on that, and then we've added to that chapter this time, looking at the uh, wage subsidies, the EWSS, Employment Wage Subsidy Scheme data. Um, so complementing what we have in our labor markets insights bulletins uh, each quarter, we've got the um, EWSS data here in total, uh, the billion, uh, roughly a billion in Q2 uh, 2021. And we're also showing that as a share um, of uh, wages in the economy. So wages are about a third of the economy, and we're looking at the uh, subsidies there are about 4.1% of wages in the economy in Q2 uh, 2021. Um, and in the publication, we've more breakdown. So, for example, in the arts entertainment sector, the subsidies are about 17.7% uh, of wages. So there's more uh, uh, data on that uh, in the publication. So to finish on the Q&A, um, 
the big picture is we've strong growth across the sectors and the economy, the M&E data uh, growing strongly for industry and for information and communications. But we've also got that, that rebound in the domestic data quarter on quarter. Um, and we look across the M&E dominated sectors, both those uh, as well as the, the other sectors um, are growing in the quarter. So both the domestic and the M&E data growing to give us that strong result for GDP of 6.3%. On the expenditure side, uh, net exports are again as strong as they typically are at 4.2 billion or 8.2%. Um, strong growth in investment, um, government expenditure, and uh, PCE up 12.6%, which is driving the, the modified uh, final demand measure 8.4%, um, which as it turns out is quite similar to the final domestic demand measure because the globalization effect, effects are much lower uh, in the quarter. So that's nice to see that the, the typical measures and the modified measures are converging without uh, some of the globalization effects. And finally, the strong uh, net factor outflows, a third uh, uh, strong quarter out of four uh, on those uh, leading to a GNP result of 6.7%. Uh, so I'll hand over to John for the uh, international accounts. Thank you. Um, so now I'd like to take you through the international accounts for quarter two, 2021. So first we can take a look at our infographic, which gives a good summary of the results. So we can see our good surplus of 42.3 billion, our services surplus of 2.9 billion, and our net income outflows of 30.2 billion. And these all combine to give us our current account surplus of 15 billion or 14.9% of GDP. Our net international investment position at the end of June was minus 607 billion, while our stock of foreign direct investment in Ireland is now 1.2 trillion euros. Looking at our headline figure, we can see here our current account balance as a percent of GDP. Um, we've, we've had five quarters now without significant IP imports, and we can see that our series is much more stable as opposed to the, the volatility in previous quarters where we had large IP imports. Um, this seems to be a continuing trend. So for Q2 2021, we have a current count balance of 15 billion or 14.9% of GDP. So to split this out a bit more, we can see that our merchandise surplus is 42.3 billion which is up 8 billion on the same quarter last year. Our services balance is 2.9 billion, which is up 4.6 billion on the same quarter last year. Some of this difference is due to differences in IP imports. We had about 4 billion of IP imports in quarter two, 2020, while we've had less than a billion in this quarter, um, but not the drastic difference we've seen in previous quarters. And our net income outflow is 30.2 billion euros, which is up 7.5 billion on the same quarter last year. And these all combine to give us our current account balance of 15 billion euros, which is up 5.1 billion on the same quarter last year. Looking at this balance over time, again, we can see our more stable current account balance over the last five quarters. Um, we can see the previous quarters, the more volatile quarters with those large green bars, which are predominantly driven by IP imports. Uh, comparing this quarter to last quarter, our merchandise balance is down by 1.4 billion, but this is a normal pattern moving from Q1 to Q2. And our services balance is down by 2 billion, while our net factor outflows are up 633 million. And these all combine to give us a current account balance, which is down 4 billion on last quarter. Looking at the, the breakdown of these components, we can see that our merchandise exports are 69.1 billion, which is up 12 billion on the same quarter last year, while our imports are up 26.8 billion, which is up 4 billion on the same quarter last year. So we can see that the, the increase of 8 billion in our net merchandise exports is largely driven by the increase in exports. On the services side, we have exports of 68.8 billion, which is up 13.5 billion on the same quarter last year. This change largely being driven by computer services while on the import side, we have 65.9 billion, which is up 8.9 billion on the same quarter last year, this largely being driven by increase in royalties and licenses. Looking at our primary income, we have inflows of 28.7 billion, which is up 6.5 billion on the same quarter last year, and outflows of 57.9 billion, which is up 14 billion on the same quarter last year. Looking at the part of this that's made up of direct investment, profit and interest, we can see that those inflows are 7.8 billion, which is up 5.3 billion on the same quarter last year, 
And those outflows are 34.8 billion, which is up 13.4 billion on the same quarter last year. So we can see that the, the direct investment is the main driver of the, the increase in the primary income outflows and overall the total net income outflows of 7.5 billion. Looking a bit more closely now at our goods, exports and imports, we can see that in quarter two, our goods exports are up compared to last quarter and also up compared to last year, while our imports are also up compared to last quarter and up compared to last year. But as I've said, the, the increase in exports is stronger and is driving the increase in net merchandise. Looking at how this splits out into international trade and goods for processing and other, we can see that on the export side, our international trade is down slightly quarter on quarter, but is up year on year, while our goods for processing exports are down quarter on quarter and up year on year. We can see that our merchanting, which is a net export, is up compared to last quarter and also up compared to last year. On the import side, we can see that international trade is up compared to last quarter and up compared to last year, while our goods for processing imports are down compared to last quarter and down compared to last year. So we can see that this increase in net exports, again, is being driven by the increase in exports and that this is spread across international trade, goods for processing and merchandise. Moving on to the service side, we have an overall increase in service exports of 13.5 billion. And we can see here that this is largely driven by the increase of 10.7 billion in computer services. Our tourism services and transport services continue their low levels due to COVID with them down 133 million and 20 million respectively. Business services are up 256 million, but within this, we are seeing decreases in operational leasing of 554 million. So we can see the increase in exports is largely driven by the increase in computer services. Looking at the import side, we have an overall increase compared to last year of 8.9 billion. And this is largely driven by the increase in royalties and licenses of 7.8 billion. Business services are down 483 million, but within this, R&D is down 3.8 billion and miscellaneous business services are up 3.2 billion. Our tourism services, again, continued the, the COVID impact and are down 33 million on the same quarter last year. Looking a bit more closely at our royalty imports, we can see here the line shows our total royalty imports, while the green bar shows our pharmaceutical royalty imports. And the difference between the two is predominantly uh, information and communication in royalty imports. So we can see that pharma has an increase quarter on quarter and also compared to the same quarter last year. And we're also seeing an overall level trend, an overall level trending upwards following the increase and decrease of Q4 2020 and Q1 2021. Looking at our direct investment income a bit more closely, we can see here that our inflows are 7.8 billion which is up 5.3 billion on the same quarter last year, and the outflows are 34.8 billion, which is up 13.3 billion on the same quarter last year. So again, this combination is the main contributor to the net income outflow increase of 7.5 billion compared to last year. Looking at how the direct investment income out outflow split out, we can see here that the income on debt, which is the, the blue bar, is fairly flat. Um, our dividends are down compared to the, the large level last quarter. They're back to a more normal level, but still quite strong. But we can see that overall, the bulk of the outflows is the combination of the dividends and distributed branch profits and reinvested earnings. Looking at the split out by sector of these quarterly profits outflows, we can see that quarter on quarter, we have a decrease in the manufacturing sector, which is down 4.2 billion. While the information communication sector remains fairly flat, up 112 million. But when we look at the year on year comparison, they are both up, with manufacturing up 8.1 billion on the same quarter last year, and information and communication up 2.4 billion on the same quarter last year. So now looking at our trade income and our current account with the UK, we can see that the trade balance with the UK has increased by 1.6 billion and net income outflows have increased by 531 million compared with the second quarter of 2020. And this continues the positive merchandise trade balance with the UK that we saw last quarter. The result is a current account surplus of 1.3 billion in the second quarter of 2021, 
which is up 1 billion from the surplus of 219 million in the second quarter of 2020. Looking at our financial accounts and our financing in Q2, we can see that in net transactions, we're seeing low levels compared to some of the previous quarters where we had large restructuring. In direct investment abroad, we had an increase of 9.9 billion, while in direct investment in Ireland, we had an increase of 6.2 billion. And these give us a net increase of 3.7 billion. On portfolio investments, we had an increase of 89.1 billion in, on assets and an increase of 89.8 billion in liabilities, which gives us a net of minus 641 million. While in other investments, we had a decrease in assets of 16.2 billion and a de decrease in liabilities of 33.9 billion. And this gives us the net of plus 17.7 billion here that we can see in the yellow bar. Looking at our positions on our international investment position, we have a net international investment position of minus 607.1 billion at the end of June 2021, which is an increase of 30 billion on the end of March 2021 position. And we can see that this change is distributed between the different financial sectors. So to summarize, in Q2 2021, we have a current account balance of 15 billion or 14.9% of GDP and we're continuing to see low levels of IP imports. Our COVID-19 effects continue with lower tourism exports and imports and with lower transport services exports. So now I'd like to pass it back to Jennifer to summarise. Thank, thanks, John, for that, and thanks to Chris for the, um, the, the National Accounts results as well. So just to pull a, a couple of the, the key aggregates from, the, um, from all of the results that are published today, GDP up by 6.3% in, in, in the quarter in quarter two compared to quarter one of 2021. Um, and as we've seen, that's been driven by growth across the MNE and the domestic sectors. Um, GMP at 6.7%. Uh, modified domestic demand grew by 8.4% Q2 on Q1. Um, again, driven uh, by domestic activity, uh, very low levels of trade in um, intellectual property products um, in this quarter, as we've seen in, in, in more recent quarters as well. And then a, a, a significant part of that modified domestic demand, personal consumption, and what we all spend on goods and services. So very much drilling down into the what, what the households are doing, um, and the um, their contribution to the growth in. Uh, uh, quarter to 12.6% increase in personal consumption in, in the quarter. 